In this session, I'm going to be looking at uh, buying a dip and basically going through the do's and don'ts when trading that type of strategy. But uh, as simple as that may seem, I want to put it in conjunction with something I'll be putting out in a couple of weeks' time, and that's a completely different trading strategy whereby we are planning for a significant rally. I'm trying to find the base of a, a long-standing trend um, and to look for significant reversal and hopefully significant opportunity for profit when it does rally. Now, it's true that they both rely on one thing, and that is the market moving higher. But that's probably where the story ends. Now, as, as we will have seen from some of the charts put up earlier, the opportunity for buying this year has been relatively scant. We have been certainly in equities. We've been in uh, a, a very strong downward bearish trend. And, and even if you look at currencies, um, you know, that the US dollar has been king most of the year. So if you're trading the dollar and you're being buying that dollar, the opportunity to see a reversal in, in the dollar's um, fate um, have been few and far between. But we can see there on the right hand side, there have been opportunities. We've got the USA 500 there. There are opportunities to buy dips. But at no point in time have we seen the base of this move. So, you know, we do have a buying opportunity for a short term strategy. But if we were to try to find the base of this market and look for that big reversal, we would have been struggling most of the year. So, the key thing for people to understand is what type of environment are you in and what type of trade are you putting on because you have to respond differently and it's very very key to understand and stick to your designated strategy so when you are buying the dip you are looking for a short-term potentially day trader opportunity it may go on for a bit longer after that but if you're looking to plan for a rally, try to find that base and look for that reversal. You are looking for a longer term structural shift in the market and you have to approach that in a different way. Please do not blur these two scenarios um, and hopefully over this session and the next, you'll find out exactly why. So if we move to, uh, to this year and we've got the Euro, Euro dollar chart for 2022, we will see exactly what we, we've just discussed. We're in a downtrend. We see the significant levels um, you know, that will come up through the, uh, through the charts. But each one of these opportunities, if we were to look to buy, and, and, and let's face it, I mean, certainly when we talk about equities, lots of people having been in that mode for many years still like to try and buy the dip. Um, but even in this instance, you know, the opportunity to buy or sell, there are opportunities there, but they are short-term profit opportunities. You know, we are in a bearish mode here in Euro dollar, i.e. we're looking at a strong dollar. And if we buy it's going to feel like we're trying to catch a falling sword. And that's never a comfortable place to be in. And that suggests that it is really a short-term opportunity. So that's going to mean it's more of an instinctive decision. As the market comes to you, it may be driven by technical analysis. You know, We see there are some, some decent support levels that may have triggered a very short-term base. We have had on-off pivotal data, predominantly inflation data, and maybe some commentary from central banks that occasionally have been pivotal. Um, we also should be looking and getting that feel for market positioning. You know, those overbought, oversold conditions can push us into one of these short-term trades. And invariably here, if we're looking at a strong dollar with yields going up, if all of a sudden we see those bond yields come a bit lower, again, that may trigger a trade. So we should always still have a reason to trade, but we should know that in this bearish market, if we're looking to just buy a dip, it should be a short-term trade. So what are the general essentials of buying this dip? Well, we've got this market here. We've, uh, we've contracted the market. We've got this situation on the 28th of September, pretty volatile day, 95.36, the September low, and 09 
7.50 was the high. And so what would happen is as the market has dipped here, we would have had something trigger our mind to feel that there is a short-term opportunity. And remember, that's what we're going for. So we buy this dip for whatever reason at 96.40. As we know, when we buy the dip, you must have discipline. So we put a defined stop loss in there. This is a short-term trade. So we shouldn't be putting the stop loss miles away. It should be at a good level. And as we see, we put it below that 28th of September low. We've given ourselves a little bit of slippage. So we're there at 95.30. It's a defined level. It's affordable to us. We can now go and enjoy the upside as the market hopefully moves in our favor. What we should also be doing is creating a sell zone for us. Don't just pick a single point. Create a zone because once we get up into that zone, the market will move around and you have an opportunity to um, be slightly more flexible. But because, again, this is a short-term opportunity, we should be locking in our gains because we've already decided this is a level where we are comfortable that we will have maximized the trade. Now, as traders, we generally always seek for a little bit more. And I'm not going to discourage that. But what I will say is, if you seek for a little bit more profitability on this, you should be doing it only if momentum still feels good. And I would seriously feel about scaling this trade out. So I would certainly sell a little bit um, in that original sell zone and go searching for a little bit more. But what I most definitely would do is trail my stop all the way up to that sell zone. So if I miss the further selling opportunity and we push back through that sell zone, I want to be out of this trade and I want to be counting my cash. And, and that's simply what we have to be doing. We have to be disciplined in this approach. And because it's a short-term gain that we're looking for, we make sure that we capture all of the revenue that we were looking for if the market moves in our favor. Now, one trap I don't want you to fall into. And here we have exactly the same setup, not a particular market. We buy the dip. We put our stop loss protection in a, an affordable level that's not a million miles away. We create our sell zone and the market hopefully moves in our favor. What we should be not what we should not be doing is pulling your sell order completely and watching it go higher and hoping that it goes higher and higher and higher. I've given you a strategy that crystallizes the intrinsic value in that trade. Do something along those lines because what happens is if you get greedy and start looking for more profit within, without enhancing your protection, you stand the risk of losing everything. And as we see in this instance, remember, we're potentially fighting against the trend here. We're going for a short-term buy on a dip in a bearish market. There's every opportunity. You'll see that direct blue line go all the way back down. And what happens with us as a trader, we've got greedy. We've not sold any up there at all. We got emotionally attached to the trade. We got married to that trade. We think now it's only ever going to go up. And what have we done? We've forgotten what we're in that trade for. So now we watch it go through our buy level. We've even gone past our break even. And I guarantee you what happens because the human emotion comes into it is we let it go through our stop loss protection. We pull our stop loss order and then we go back down. And now we're losing even more money than was affordable in the first place. And the reason you do that is because fear comes into it. You pull your stop loss, number one, because you're frightened to take a loss. And number two, you're very, very fearful of selling out at the bottom and watching it bounce again. These are the emotions that we have to really rid ourselves of in our trading or really, really reduce them in, in, in the way that we behave in the markets. So there's your warning. What's happened here, and the reason we don't want to fall into this trap, is that your discipline has gone completely and the problem is you've moved from a position of real strength and great profitability to a position of weakness because now what you're doing is you're hoping and praying for a bounce and that's not a good place to be. Trading is all about being brave and having the courage of your convictions. It's not about the emotional swings that your brain will actually bring into play. So please create these levels Stick to those levels, execute on plan, and you won't find yourself 
in this poor and weak position. Hopefully that helps you. And in the next session, I'm going to go more into those more longer term investor type trades where we really are trying to find the base or the top of a long standing trend and looking for a much, much bigger profit from a significant reversal.